next guest, longtime friends of the program. That said, there was a point in my life where one Mike Golick was more than enough, and now we have two of them. And I better be careful because they could easily beat me up. They're probably saving that for Mike Greenberg. So please welcome Mike Golick and Mike Golick Jr. Mike Sr. and Junior co-host of Gojo and Golick on DraftKings Network. <laughs> big Mike, Little Mike, although Little Mike is Big Mike. Yeah, yeah. it's it's changed. Um, I have a, a bone to pick with you. All righty. First off, congratulations. I just saw a publication that said you're the number one uh, national sports show in the country. Dan Patrick, wow. number one. Okay. That, that's not the bone to pick with you. Okay. Number two is... is Fritzy uh, got a hundred bucks for me and Mike for being on the show. He said we had to pay to be on your show because you're yes, number one. Yes. So what, what, what the hell is that? I'm big now. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. it's right. clearly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Big Mike, little Mike, yeah, big, yeah, big, big, big Dan. Dan. Big Dan. <laughs> big Dan. <laughs> That's what I was known in high school was yes, Big Dan. Yeah, in it's your big, mind. Right? Yes, I yeah. was. <laughs> All righty. Here they are. Uh, good to see you guys. You too. Number one topic this week. Mm is what now and what do you think it will be by Super Bowl? Mike, where does Taylor Swift fit into that? <laughs> uh, right now, number one, considering the Grammys last night, I would say. I mean, but the Tavis thing has been the big story of most of this season. So I'd say that lead dogs the week here and then we'll give way to football as the week goes on. Yeah, that's always the interesting thing, as obviously, Dan, as you know as well. It, you try and talk as little football in the beginning of the week <laughs> to kind of crescendo Old. to it. The, 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 though I will say, in, in doing shows, as I was listening to you talk to Nicole Arbach, who's fantastic, I immediately started thinking of me and Mike's show later on today going, boy, I'm going to fight back. And I started thinking of topics to talk about, anything but the Super Bowl, yeah. you know, and, and still wait until later in the week. But also you have to play the hits. Oh, oh yeah. yes. As, as yeah. we know, being at ESPN, they tell you to play the hits there. And sometimes it's fun to just take, you know, that off the beaten path and say, let's go down that road. I think what's happening in college football is, I mean, it's going to be transcendent. It's going to happen. The question is when and what is it going to look like? Your thoughts on that? You know, I looked at, didn't we, as I heard Nicole talking, didn't we have the Pac-12, the Big Ten, and the ACC all arm in arm saying we're all the friends alliance. now? Never yes. forget. Uh, the alliance until, <laughs> and, and how great that was going to work until it doesn't, yeah. and everybody's on their own then? Well, I, I look at the Big Ten now and the SEC as two prom kings out there saying, hey, let's take over the world together until we're not, until something benefits one more than the other, especially when a Greg Sankey is involved because he's going to answer to nobody so I always have a little trepidation when I okay. hear people are getting together, alliances are getting together. I know you feel differently. That's the fun of battling my young, wrong son. <laughs> I think we just all see where this is going, and it's one of those, I don't know how we get there, but I'm pretty sure I know where the destination is, and it's the one super conference to rule them all that we've been whispering about forever. And when the two premier, I mean, think about how long now we've already been referencing it as the power two in college football like it's the big 10 in the sec's world at this point and so the fact that the two prom kings have started talking at a time where you've got lawsuits running rampant where as soon as the ncaa tries to step in and regulate anything regarding name image and likeness of the changing world of college football everyone's ready to sue because they know there are attorney generals that know that their constituency is all going to love this and you've got the higher courts that are always going to rule in favor of players and the schools are realizing and the power conferences are realizing hey we don't have to play by your rules anymore because no one has power in this sport it has existed largely lawlessly for a long time the ncaa's tried to come in every once in a while and corral stuff but it, it, it never really has been governed by anyone, and so there's a great chance to create power out of nowhere. We're talking to Mike Golick Sr., Mike Golick Jr., and they are the uh, co-host of Gojo and Golick on DraftKings Network. You know, Patrick Mahomes has gotten into that category where we, go, we, we did this this morning before we came on. We're like, how many conference championships <laughs> has he been to? Like, when you start to forget, like LeBron, Tom Brady. Wait, Brady's got, oh, seven Super Bowls. Like, you get into that category there, and that's when you know you've made it. When we forget how many you've been to, how many you've won, is Mahomes the second greatest quarterback of all time right now? See, I, I, I want to hold off on that because me being, you know, one of the older people, how many people remember Johnny Unitas or yeah. some of the great quarterbacks back yeah, in the day? Where, where, 
<laughs> exhibit, him. exhibit A. I, mean, I did right not realize I mean, you were going to get a Johnny there, Unitas reference there already. There was great quarterback play <laughs> decades ago. That's right? Sid Luckman. Man, I <laughs> remember him. There was football the before news? the year 2000. I mean, but seriously, I get laughed at when I say that, but how do you judge all of that, right? We're in a stats world what now. What about ability? Greatest well, ability. I mean, listen, you, you look at athletes back in the day to now, they're just better athletes, and but that always doesn't make them better. But with Pat, you're getting that rare combination of he's a better athlete than a lot of quarterbacks and better than a lot of quarterbacks. Am I going to put him in the top two right now? No, I'm going to wait because I'm going to give the players before him the benefit of the doubt of their longevity. Okay? Pat's been great right out of the gate, but let's, let's let it continue to happen. He's... I don't know if he'll get to, to Tom's statistical area of, of postseasons and Super Bowls. So I'm going to wait on that. But look, I'll, I'll put it this way. He's in the team picture right now. With, but with their longevity, most of them have not accomplished what he's done and the way he's yeah. done it. And that's always the differentiator for me is because we're going to have a very – and some people call it lazy, the comparison with Tom Brady and us wanting to fast-track him for that, but that's earned, not given. Like you pointed out, he's 28, and we're already forgetting stuff that he did. That's insane. It shouldn't be happening. And because of that, and because he's been the driving force – this has been the first year where it's like, oh, they're, you know, defense and a run game, and Pat's got to make plays every once in a while. It was him to start. He was the thing that drove the ship – out of the gate and is now getting the cavalry to come help, which is why I think he deserves a lot more place in that conversation than maybe you want to give him. We were talking about this this morning as well, that in 20 years from now, do we do we find those Kansas City Chiefs who were kind of, it, it was spawned now in the last five years or so, or even now with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, like it was with the Cowboys in the 70s, Packers in the 60s. A lot of our uh, fan bases are based off what happened in the 70s right. or the 60s. Steelers, Cowboys, Packers, Niners. Right. And now you have the, the Kansas City Chiefs. The Patriots were never America's team. No. Uh, Boston's team, but never America's team. But is Kansas City capable of being America's team? Well, I think be, part of it is how are you looked at? Are you looked at as somebody you want to see beaten? Or are you looking at, like, I like these people? Bill, you know, you know, doing his press conferences, he wasn't endearing himself to anybody. Tom was doing it the Bill Belichick way and not saying anything until he got to Tampa Bay, and then all of a sudden he broke out a little bit. Who, who doesn't love Andy Reid? By the way, Andy's not getting enough talk either. This guy's walking straight into the Hall of Fame as well for what he's doing. Mahomes is fun. Travis Kelsey has always been fun, and now the whole Taylor Swift thing as well. They're kind of a fun team to follow, but... Dan, you know this. We've been doing this a long time. You love a team on the rise and when they're at the top for a little bit. <laughs> yes. And then, man, you want to see darts thrown at them. You yeah. want to see them come crashing it, down. It's like when you have your favorite band. You know, yeah. I remember seeing them at Toad's Place. And yeah. then all of a sudden, they're like, <laughs> you know, they're, they're playing the garden. I hate yeah. them now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I, oh. I think, but I do think they are really likable right now, even lovable to a point, especially the whole Taylor Swift thing is added in there. I've been so disgusted with, our football people who have had a problem with that. I'm just like, God, leave it alone. Why, I mean, why do people have a problem? I have no idea. Do, do you remember when Jessica Simpson was shown all the time when she was dating Tony Romo? We never heard any of she this. She wasn't shown nearly enough. No, no exactly. <laughs> there you go. We also did hear a lot of this back then, by the way. Pe people have yeah. never uh, – uh, yeah. the, like – Knuckle dragging football crowd has never yeah. really liked women invading their space in any meaningful Didn't way. Didn't they go to Cancun yeah, at one see, point? That was yeah, a huge right. scandal. Yes. Like, yes. He's not focused on the game. Yeah. But, but that was the quarterback of the Cowboys right. going right. to Cancun, and he cost the Cowboys, you know, in their mind. Like, you know, your, your mind should be on football. You know, Taylor doesn't show up and say, hey, you know, I haven't been on camera in a while. Exactly. You know, you know CBS shows Robert Kraft a couple of times every game. Or Jerry Jones yep. every game. And are we really better off for that? I don't need to see them. <laughs> no. Exactly. And oh, by the way, for everybody out there, Travis Kelsey's numbers with Taylor there are better than his numbers without <laughs> there Taylor go. there, okay? Oh, Taylor just plus so, minus. Just so <laughs> we set oh. that up instead of people saying, oh, she shows up and Travis plays bad. No, he doesn't. Though he did have two drops in the last game. Where do you stand on this as, as we move? She might be a villain here if yeah. Kansas City loses. She, I mean, she was when they went to Baltimore, too. Like, that was finally the fan base that was like, oh, yeah, no, we're, uh, we're going to throw rocks at this whole situation, which I get. It's this point in the postseason. They are the team. And to Dad's point about 
what they're going to represent to a lot of people. Like, I don't know if we're going to get to a point where anyone can really be America's team anymore because everyone's so exposed now. For these guys, theirs is different because he's transcended. Like, I would, sports stories, you guys have seen break contain at some point. When you start to see him talked about on GMA and the shows that are outside yeah. of our bubble, they've broken contain both with this relationship and with that combination of in a helmet sport, Travis has been one of the guys whose face you've gotten to know because of the podcast, because of the relationship. And so they've got a chance to reach more casual eyeballs than most. But I think because everyone's so exposed and because these guys are now the stopper on top of a conference for a lot of people, i.e. Buffalo, whose happiness is being really affected by the fact that Patrick Mahomes and these Chiefs exist. I find it interesting that this is probably the best matchup, but the matchup that we didn't want that they didn't have the storylines that I think if Buffalo was here against Detroit, people would be more excited, even though these are probably the two best teams. But it's weird how we're like, yeah, didn't we see this a couple of years ago? <laughs> yeah, well, we did. We saw a Kansas City win there. I, I think one of the interesting things, and we had Mike and I had Richard Sherman on our show, and he talked about everybody loves a good underdog story except for Brock Purdy. For some reason, Brock Purdy, <laughs> who has been doing great out there, we can't give him the love because you say, oh, he's got four or five people to dish the ball out to. Well, yeah, so what? Most, most, most players have great players around them as well. But I'm with you because we're going to talk about Mahomes, we're going to talk about Brock Purdy, but this, like the AFC Championship game, could be a game talked about on defense. And that's like a swear word to anybody else except for like me, a former defensive player. I love seeing great defense, and you may get that here. Yeah, I think that having that underdog of if Buffalo and Detroit, somebody's going to get their first Super Bowl. Right, right. And, and, I, and it's interesting, though, that people are like, you know, there's no buzz here. But these are the two best teams. They are. And it feels like uh, the media will probably, you know, enhance the Taylor Swift thing because maybe we've – been down this road with all these different storylines with Mahomes, with Kelsey, but the Brock Purdy one, he didn't get this chance last year. Now he gets this chance. And I've said before, I think he's got to win two Super Bowls, Mike, before people give him credit. Not one. I think they'll go, okay, all right, let me see you do it again. It, it, we went through this with Peyton Manning, right? I mean, and, and it still blows my mind, and I know it's a topic nobody cares to discuss anymore, but why do we put Super Bowl wins with quarterbacks? When there's offense, defense, special teams, wins and losses, I never understood that. But regardless of what I think, that's where we are. I mean, it comes down to the number. So I think they could have been there last year. Brock Purdy doesn't get his elbow hurt. But I'm with you. You know, nowadays for quarterbacks, we keep talking about that with Aaron Rodgers, right? He could use another one as well, even though he's walking into the Hall of Fame. That numbers count for quarterbacks. I, I think – Brock is such an interesting because it's multiple conversations having it uh, happening at once with Brock with everybody just jumping into the fray because there is oh he's a great story he has outperformed his draft status he has maxed out his physical ability he is running this offense much better than his predecessor Jimmy Garoppolo for all the people who want to say well Kyle was able to get Jimmy Garoppolo to be a winning quarterback in the postseason their numbers are not really comparable in the postseason Brock is a markedly better quarterback especially we've seen late in games in this postseason but that then gets him because of the team success into these MVP conversations where now you're staring eye to eye with Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes <laughs> and quarterbacks. He is very much not at this juncture as a second year player who was the last pick in the draft. So it, it, it's a tough eval because of that. But I hope this week we kind of do settle into Hey, this is pretty damn cool that this guy yes. has answered yep. the bell yes. at he every has. turn in yeah. a post where we didn't think the Niners could come back and win games, and he's done it twice in games he's played bad. That's a level of moxie from a second-year player coming off an injury that is wild. I uh, probably have to take credit and blame for uh, assigning game manager to uh, quarterbacks. It started with Alex Smith, and Alex is not my friend, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I, I think we have to change game commander. Like, if I, if, I, if I dress it up a little bit, like game manager, okay, it doesn't sound good. But, like, we, 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 we want to change the name of meatloaf to something different because it doesn't sound good. Ooh. You're going to have meatloaf, but if you change it to meat heaven, you know, then, you know, then meat mountain, then maybe we, we view it differently. So the Meat Mountain, I like that yes, one. Yes, of course. Yeah. The, I, the, the, by the way, the Meat Mountain is a secret menu item at Arby's, and I don't recommend anyone orders <laughs> it. I did it. I did it so you don't have oh, to. I, thank you, Mike. I went down in the Arby's <laughs> coal mines for you, and I came out alive, thank you. but I didn't feel, uh, thank I didn't you. feel great the, about there it. There are two things, two terms that are the F word of football, game manager and analytics. 
analytics should just be re redistributed as that information, Absolutely. not Absolutely. analytics. It's, it's just information that we digest and then decide what we want to do. Yeah. By the way, Dan, to your point about rebranding it, someone, and I, I wish I could remember who it was and give them credit. This is not me. This is Stolen Valor from Twitter. But someone called it Game CEO. Like, you're not the manager. Okay. Like, you're a C-suite executive of this thing. Okay. You're out here oh, wheeling like and dealing. All right. So I'm that fine. could be a, a, yeah. a route we go. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to get you know away from this because I, I brought this up a couple of times. You know, Bart Starr, game manager. Or, you know, Bob Greasy, game manager. Right. Johnny Unitas, game manager. Tom Brady, game manager. It's not a negative, but it makes it seem like you're not talented. So right. that's where I get it. So if we change it to game commander, game, mm. game general, Ooh. Something it's up like, to you to do that. I will you, do you, that. You, yeah. have, you, you have the ability. I have the number one show there in America. You go. You do. That's all. That's exactly all right. <laughs> When's the last time you spanked him? When I, I spanked him? Yeah. Uh, two days ago? <laughs> <laughs> he, tried, he tried last night at dinner to take a swipe. I was the one that lead dog dessert because yeah. everyone else is afraid of it, and I'm not going to run from the fight. And I ordered I, this plate of ice cream, and as soon as it lands, I see him trained over in my direction. Had a spoon. And he went and reached, and I, like I parried his spoon away with mine Ooh, and deflected him. That was a big moment in the father-son dynamic. Like All it. of a sudden, I've denied Normally, he him. just gives in, and now he doesn't anymore. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Uh, great to see you guys. Mike <laughs> Sr., Mike Jr., the co-host of Gojo and Golik on DraftKings Network. We'll take a break. We're uh, back after this in the Dan Patrick Show.